Hello, and now that the dust has somewhat settled on the presidential election in which Singapore elected Mr. Thaman Shamugaratnam as the next president, let's find out the good, the bad and the ugly moments of covering PE 2023 on the ground. I'm Olivia Kui, and joining me are just some of the Straits Times reporters who are on the campaign trail with the three candidates. First up, we have Kok Wu Feng, who was with Mr. Thaman's team. Hi. And then we have Jin Yao with Mr. Ng Kok Song's. Hi, happy to be here. And Judith Tan, who was with Mr. Tan Kin Lian. Hello. And of course, let's not forget Assistant News Editor Lim Yen Liang, who is also here with us. Hi, Olivia. So guys, let's start with the good. What were some of your favourite moments, or favourite moments, being on the campaign, the campaign trail? Mm, I think for me, it has to be polling day. Uh, I was in Taman Jiro on the cover. Uh, Mr. Taman, uh, he went to visit the Hock Centre uh, on the night of polling day. And, um, you know, when the results, when the sample count came out and, and everyone sort of cheered and uh, the atmosphere was electric. So I think that was one of the most iconic moments of the campaign for me. Those pictures were like wonderful. Just yes, yes. incredible atmosphere. You could feel yes. it off the camera as even well. Even from the start, even before Mr. Taman arrived, there was a whole group of supporters who were already there. And they were very excited to be, uh, I think, witnessing history. So I think that that was quite a, a big moment for, for, for us who was covering on the ground. I think Mr. Ng's um, polling day was a lot quieter. <laughs> so he had a really close group, like core group, who were around him the whole time. But I think for me was the level of access that we got to him. He was very open to us. Yeah, I've sat in the car with him and talked to him about his cat, his dog, his like what he does behind closed doors at home. Like he said that. He was telling me things like his father-in-law is going to pick him, like going to get dinner for him, going to cook dinner for him. So that was kind of nice for me, like a highlight to be able to get so close. To see the man behind the candidate. Yeah, especially considering at that point he might have been president. So I thought that was quite interesting that he was so open to us. Yeah. I'm not too sure if this is a highlight because, you know, it's quite funny sometimes when you walk, um, do the walkabouts and when he shook hands with all these people, when you say he, of course, it's Mr. Tan Kin Lian. Lian. Yes. Yep. He took wee fees, took selfies. As he moved off, one little old lady peeked out from her stall and she said in Teochew, Kai Mai Ti ha? Meaning, who was that? Oh, and, you know, it's like everyone seemed to be really polite. You know, when you stick out your, your hand to shake their hands, they will shake your hands, take pictures with you, but once again, they might not know who you are. So that that was a funny moment, but I wouldn't call it highlight. Well, Yen Liang, since you know you're one of the editors or the supervisors that oversee our the Straits Times uh, presidential election coverage, what were some of the challenges that you had to you know I guess tackle and overcome during the last two weeks and probably even before that? So the challenge would be very closely twined with the highlight for me, which was when the polling uh, when the sample count result came out, and then it became clear that it was not going to be a long drawn night. I think the challenge for us very much was we had to plan for various scenarios, including a repeat of 2011 when it came very, very close. The margin was turned out to be about 7,000 plus votes and the night stretched into the early dawn and the result only came out at 4 plus in the morning. So we had to prepare for various scenarios and I don't think any of us really expected such a decisive number to be out at about 11 p.m. But that was very good for us because we had an off stone, a hard cut to, to meet in order for the papers to go out on time tomorrow. Definitely a favourite moment as well. <laughs> ending, ending on time. Yes, exactly. <laughs> Any challenges then, the rest of you? I think the, the fluidity of it all, because uh, I think for... for so I, I followed Mr. Taman a little bit. I think my colleagues, uh, Fana as well as uh, Natasha, also helped along with that. Um, I think because sometimes, you know, the schedules change quite quickly, timings, for example. So um, I think throughout the period of time during campaign, uh, the campaign period, we were always on alert to um, react to certain changes in the schedule, where he might appear, where he might not appear, things like that. So I think that's quite that's one of the challenges that, that I think we face. Yeah. Mine was almost the opposite because Mr. Ng would appear everywhere. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so I think on actual polling day, he visited maybe six or seven different stations and we were trying to like chase him down to cover each and every one. And um, I told him afterwards that he should give his driver a tip because that guy was driving very, very fast to get him everywhere. And just of course, you know, like the campaigning period, at least like three, 
four stops a day. Yeah, so kudos, right, for a guy of 75 years old for yeah. having such energy. Well, guys, were there any bombshells or any stunning developments that, you know, that you witnessed while covering the, the campaigns of the three? So when you say bombshells, you're not actually referring to pretty girls, are you? Well, not that kind of bombshell. <laughs> yeah, not that kind. Any other kind of bombshell? I mean, it has to be a uh, touching box endorsement of Mr. Tan Kilian, I think. I think for all of us, even though I wasn't covering that particular moment, I think just knowing about that happening, I think that was quite a big moment for, for all of us. And, um, you know, the analysts always said that that, that's, that moment kind of made the election, the contest a bit more politically charged than it, than it originally was already. How do you see the media's role in covering the, president, the presidential election? Because, I mean, the three of you, you would possibly feel this. You are embedded in each of the candidates' teams, but you guys are definitely not part of the team. Mm. So, you know, okay, maybe I hear from Yen, Yen Lang first. Like, you know, how do you, how do you see the media's role in that? And then we hear from the rest of you. So, at HQ, over here in the newsroom, so we divide ourselves into various teams so that each uh, candidate has a dedicated team of reporters and a supervisor or two to cover the individual candidates. So the reason for doing that is that we want to make sure that we do justice to all the candidates, that there's a certain degree of parity involved, and that if you follow them every day throughout the campaign trail, then you also can get a sense of how their campaigns, the apps and flows, you know, the, when, when it crashes and so forth. So like Yifeng was sharing earlier, we found out about uh, Tan Cheng Bok, uh, endorsement actually, I think very late on Saturday night and early into Sunday morning when he appeared at the walkabout in Chinatown. So for us in the newsroom, uh, working with the reporters on the ground involves actually very, very close communication, like almost minute to minute. Uh, what, what, they, what are they doing? What time is the press con? And then, you know, checking uh, almost uh, contemporaneous to what they're saying at the press conference so that we are prepping the, the story to go out as fast as it can. Yeah. So. I think the challenges for us would very much be how do we achieve that kind of balance among uh, all the candidates. At first it was four, then three. Yeah, to ensure that our coverage is, give, gives uh, all of them as equal play as possible. Of course, uh, I think you are very familiar with some of the difficulties there, especially when we have the ST show mm -hmm. and uh, only two of the candidates uh, oh, that's right, of uh, took course, the yes. invitation to come on. Yeah, it was a very fluid thing day to day. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And when candidates sometimes uh, speak beyond the ambit of the president's role, that's also a very big challenge for the media. Yeah. Sometimes we have to decide whether the tech to take would be to then uh, say, actually, he, he doesn't have the power to, do, to say or to deliver on what he is promising to do. And then sometimes we have to shift and then focus on the bits that are not so uh, in question as to the role of the president. Yeah. Well, Judith, how did you feel being part of you know, the team that is uh, surrounding Mr. Tan Kin Lian, but knowing that, you know, you are very much, you have to do your job as the media, as the journalist covering that. Being in that group of journalists and his team worked because his every thought is put down in that group, where, you know, it's like last moment cancellation, uh, last moment um, doorstop, last moment big announcements. He will keep us updated, not his team. Then um, at that point in time, I guess you would say that the journalist got close to him via WhatsApp. Well, Jean, you mentioned earlier that, you know, Mr. Ng Kok Song was very open. Yeah. He got good access, right, throughout the two weeks. So, but never once, of course, did you feel that you were part of the the, his team. Yeah, no, I think it's quite, it's a bit weird for me because um, we get to know the people on his media team really well, but then you also have to remember to be professional. So you get close to him and, you know, his, his fiance, his brother and everyone, but you kind of remember that, you know, you have to do your job at the end of the day. Um, yeah, I think for him, it's, it was a bit, the access was a bit challenging because it, for parity's sake, you kind of want the same level of access for everyone. So there were times when you know, we got a bit more compared to the other candidates and we weren't able to run everything. So yeah, I think that was probably one of the biggest challenges. And yeah. how about you, Yifeng? I mean, of course, it's been said many times that Mr. Thalman is, out of the three, is the most well-known, mm. right? So how did you, you know, thread that line? between being part of the team and, you know, having doing your job as a reporter? Well, I think, like you said, uh, Mr. Tama has a very public persona. And I think a lot of uh, his life, 
uh, is already in a public record. So actually, it's not a lot to get to know him in that sense. What showed up was maybe his relationship with his wife, uh, Jane. I think that the dynamic was more apparent on the campaign trail, which wasn't that obvious um, previously when he was minister, when he was senior minister. But I think for, for us, it was quite easy because uh, I mean, the main thing was to just, just do the job. So I think we, there was never a thought about wanting to get super close and, and, and sort of having blurred lines. I think it was quite clear the line that we were journalists and we were covering his campaign and, and that's, that's really it. Yeah. To wrap up a very grueling two weeks, you know, can I know your biggest takeaways from being so close on the ground with the three men? The takeaway here would be never stand behind him. Unless you get mean. <laughs> yes, never, never stand behind him. No matter how crowded the space is, always try and find the space between two cameras and not stand behind him. That's my takeaway. Jean, do you have the same takeaway? <laughs> not quite. Do you not get mean? Well, I, I do think we kind of stress not smiling too much when you're on camera because eventually, I mean, in this day and age, someone will take a picture and it will end up on Reddit. Like, look at this ST reporter, so pro Dan Kin Lian or Gok Song or Taman. Um, yeah, but for me, I think the biggest takeaway is that traditional campaigning works. So things like, you know, the posters, being walkabouts tend to really work, especially when you look at like Mr. Daman, I think Mr. Ng kind of played down. He had no posters. He tried. He tried to take it all online, and even though he outnumbered their like, like in terms of Instagram followers, I think he had more than both the other candidates combined. It didn't really lead to more votes. Yu Feng. Number one is uh, you know we're somebody who flies, flies on the wall, so most important is not to try to become the story, new story. So I think that's that's one. Uh, the other one is that I think the I think the election results show that not. I mean, we have certain notions about how things will go, but ultimately, when it comes to the ballot box, anything can happen. That's, that's the second one. The third one, I think, is, um, I think we're just talking about how like, it's been a whirlwind sort of nine, 10 days since nomination day. So I, I, I guess uh, the takeaway is that it's really quite a short campaign period, I suppose. And uh, within that time, trying to find out as much as possible about the candidates, who they are, what their personalities are like. It was a really a crash course in consuming a lot of podcasts and YouTube videos. Uh, long-form interviews that the various candidates give at 1.5x, 1.75x <laughs> speed. There's a lot of things to consume because we recognise that we are no longer just the, the platform that the candidates go to. They have a lot of options. Mm. So especially when you know a can particular candidate says something, you want to be able to contextualise it for the reader. Whether he said the same thing or maybe slightly different tech on some other media platform. And I think for me, the biggest takeaway really is that past performance is no indicator of future results. Yeah. Mm. I think there was a sense among some segments that with uh, other tons behind him, he, Mr. Tan Kinen would do much better than he did in 2011. Well, guys, it's unfortunately back to the grind for all of us, but, you know, it's a bit of tiring, grueling, as I said before, two weeks or ten days, but uh, I appreciate you coming here. I hope you've gotten enough rest, but coming here to share your stories with us. So thank you very much.